Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be seeing J Raccoon versus Arrogant, or Arrogant, on Act Natural. I am Shadow for CC3, your commentator, and let us begin. So, J Raccoon is starting out in the northeast corner of the map, while Arrogant is starting out in the southwest corner. Neither player has chosen their species yet. No, Arrogant is going for Vekir, and J Raccoon is going for Grekum. Now, Arrogant, in case that name is unfamiliar, it's because he's new. He's actually. Just started playing probably about two or three weeks ago. I'm curious how he's going to do. I played against him a few times myself, and he definitely has potential. He uh, needs some more experience, or at least in my experience, he needs a bit more experience. But he's definitely doing everything he can to practice and get better. There's actually a tournament for Akron, by the way. They're starting up as a Christmas tournament that's going to be going on around Christmas time. I'm not sure the exact dates offhand, but... I know that it is something you can sign up for now. If you want to play, if you have Akron, then... Go to the forums under the general discussion. You'll see a tournaments for sub forum, and then under there, there's a second Christmas tournament topic as a top topic in the forum. Go there, unless this is after Christmas 2013. For anyone watching after Christmas 2013, I apologize. We don't have Chrono Porters that go back that far. Back to the game. Erdogan is setting up a very quick expansion, actually, out to the south expansion. He Okay, he's going to his natural very quickly. Jericho, on the other hand, not going to his natural as quickly. He is much more focused on a bit of scouting, and then from there, getting Octopod Defense. He's got enough Q Plasma for Octopods, but it is going to be interesting. Aragon, on the other hand, straight for the Liquid Crystal expansion here, and or Progen mode. I think that was a mistake. That is probably a mistake, because that... Yeah, I don't see why that's happening. Okay, so anyway, Aragon's probably going to have to fix that. Or probably going to fix that. He has to fix that if he wants this auction to do anything other than just sit there forever. Because that's all it's going to do right now. And he does... There's no reason not to have RPs here. Okay, there's some reason. It's hard to defend. But still... It's not something your opponent necessarily is going to go for first. They probably will at least double check it, make a cursory glance. But... I don't know. Maybe he's just paranoid of proxies. In that case, I don't know why he's in progen mode, because progen mode units have much shorter sight range than non-progen mode units, but by half. Well, the radius is halved, so given the formula for the area of a circle, it's more like quartered. So it's not really... Not really what you want to deal with. Anyway, with... Adragant actually managing to get rid of Jericho's scouts, but looks like Adragant's actually going himself for a bit of a rush. He's not building up any RPs. He's building up early reefs. He's getting some early octas for defense. Jericho, on the other hand, has not yet gone for octopods in defense. I think because he's aware that Aragant is going for Grekum himself and not actually going for a whole lot of units. But even then, against Grekum, it's not a bad idea to build the early octopod. As defense against a bunch of octos, it can actually pay off. Anyway, Jericho, from his point of view, jumping back a bit earlier on and... He is getting up early Octo. Nothing looks like it's changed too much. Just going to get back to Aragant at the 253 mark. And Aragant is getting a very early try here. I don't know if he... Okay, there we go. That was... The mistake has been fixed. The RP has been built. No longer is it a progenerating Octo. It is now an RP. That Aragant fixed his mistake. Probably just misclicked. Anyway, because the progeneration button is right next to the resource processor button. I can totally understand that mistake. But he has fixed this mistake. So Aragon very quickly going to his natural. This is a little unusual, though not entirely, like I said, a bad idea just because it's not expected. But it's kind of risky. It's not a bad idea because if you have, if you are able to secure this and able to especially get defense on this, then you have your natural as much as you have your main base. Whereas, and of course, as you can see, Jericho is going straight to the main base, not even suspecting the natural. Probably if he were actually to scout out this main base through here, which he's about to do, the Octo just sees some RPs. He's probably expecting Aragant is either going for a proxy or going for something unwise. He's not playing well. So he's either going to underestimate Aragant or he's going to be extremely paranoid around his main base, which is unnecessary to do. If he builds an Octopod, I imagine that he means he's paranoid. Otherwise, I think he's... He's building more RPs. No, I think he is expecting that Aragant is just making a mistake. Which he's not doing, though. Jericho is still making the right response. He is still having parity on economy. Aragant, on the other hand, does have a slightly stronger military. He is getting more tech. And it's about the same time, too. Both of them at the 420 mark. And Aragant actually is a bit ahead. Jericho has not built up as much at this point as Aragant has. Actually, jumping back to the 146 mark. 
looks like he is trying to outpace Aragon's QPs. Okay, RPs, sir. He's trying to outpace the RPs, and he will be able to do this. Aragon's is actually a little bit behind, if you really look at it in terms of optimal play. But still, if he's able to secure this expansion, he will have the natural as well as the main. He is very quickly getting advanced structures, very quickly, actually. Normally wouldn't get this for another minute or two. At the five minute mark, he's about to get it. And getting a lot of QP as well, so he's definitely going for an air rush. While J Raccoon, on the other hand, is going, or possibly chronoporting rush. J Raccoon, on the other hand, now building up in his natural expansion, starting to try to secure that. Well, yeah, like I said, Aragon, he is going for this at about. He went for. Actually, wait, J Raccoon is going for it at the same time. So both players are actually fairly even for going for the natural expansions. Both J Raccoon and Aragon have decided that the natural expansion is safe enough to take. Though Aragont was a little bit ballsy in the way he did that. He was definitely very bold in his choice of timing, but it still was the right move from the looks of it. Neither player really going for the Naturals. Jericoon does have an economic advantage. He's at the three minute mark, and he has about as much economy as Aragont is going to get in two minutes. So Jericoon definitely has an advantage for economy. Aragont, on the other hand, has an advantage for tech, or at least for reefs. A bit military. He's much more focused on military. He's not focused on spiking his economy, and that's kind of unwise, honestly. Unless you're planning on going for a big rush in Akron, build about 8 or 9 RP, get up to 8 or 9 RPs before focusing on military too much. Unless you're anticipating a rush, or you're planning a rush yourself. And it looks like Aragon might be planning a rush, although an act natural, that's a slightly risky proposition. Don't know if I'd recommend that. It's, it's longer than it looks, actually. And the fact is, the main base, it's a well, it's the choke point right here, and there's another choke point, not as not as strong of a choke point, but still a choke point over here, up to the main base, and it's pretty easy to defend from there. The only weakness is that you can kind of move units around the back. There's a bit more open space than you might expect, but still, this map is longer than it looks. It's diagonal, even though it's 256 by 256, it is a diagonal from the very corner to the very corner. So I think Aragon might just be paranoid about being attacked, and that is not something you've ever really want to do. In general, in RTS games, you should not be paranoid about being attacked. If you're paranoid about being attacked, you should just attack. Because if you find that they're up to something and they're trying to get you, then, well, you're gonna you're gonna meet them halfway, and then you're gonna be able to defend effectively by your offense. And if they're not, then you're gonna be able to deal a ton of damage, and they're gonna have to defend. And it's gonna put you somewhat ahead. Now, Jericoon has actually gone and tightened up this choke point more so than it already has using Arcticus and Reefs interesting strategy. I can totally see where he's going with this. I'm a little bit surprised that he decided to do this exactly the way he did. There is actually some room, not for Grekamine, it's only one tile wide, so Grekamine this can't get through, but nicely done, definitely exploiting this terrain advantage, making absolutely sure that Aragon can't get in, and this is interesting because this is actually the only matchup, against Grekam is the only matchup where this terrain thing really matters that much. I mean, it still matters for other matchups, but the fact that Octos are melee units makes a big difference. So as you can see, there is not enough space for Octos to get in other than through this small section. The reef was moved slightly to change the shape of the wall. But this is the first time I've actually ever seen an Akron player go for a wall. Honestly, I haven't seen play like this outside of StarCraft. And yeah, as you, as you can see, there is no way for actually no way for a building to get through. I think that the Octos can get through here. I don't believe that's a problem. I think Octos can get through the south side of the Arcticus and of course the west side of the reef, which is the intended point. And Jericoon, confident that Aragon will not attack outside of that window of time that his Octos were on watch. Setting them for economy and continuing his economic advantage. I think Jericoon will be going for Corona Pointing beforehand. Now, Aragon does have earlier Actually, yes, this is earlier. This is absolutely earlier. He's Five seconds behind Jericoon and getting Spire. Jericoon, on the other hand, has not even gotten advanced structures yet, and he's about 20 seconds ahead of this one. He's fast forwarding while Aragont is going at normal speed. So Aragont is actually jumping forward as well, just double checking an attack, a hypothetical attack, seeing what Jericoon had. But yeah, Jericoon now at the 629 mark going for advanced structures, which is a bit of an advantage to Aragont. He does have air units sooner, or he can have air units sooner. He can only build one, though, probably a couple, or maybe a couple of Firepods at this point. Let's see what he's up to. He is building a Firepod. He is, in fact, building a Firepod and a Sepipod pair. Not a bad idea, especially at this stage in the game. Especially, especially given that not a lot of anti-air has been built. And it looks like Jericoon getting a far up for his own Spire, for his own air units. But Aragon, at this point, already has his units halfway into production. 
while the Spire is coming up. However, Jerakun will probably be able to double the Air Force that Aragon has, and from there will easily win the air battle, unless Aragon takes advantage of this timing and wins from, or not wins, hits from there. If he attacks right now, like right now at 736 mark, or possibly earlier, which he's not doing, but he needs to, he needs to attack right now, because Jericho is going to be building the Spire. He's just hasn't yet. He doesn't have the Chrono Energy yet. But he's going to be building the Spire. Actually, he might be getting Chrono Porting first. Yeah, I think he's getting Chrono Porting first. He is actually building a dome as well. Nicely done. So, the dome being built up just to defend against air units as well, because domes actually do a really good job on defense against air units. Static defenses actually shouldn't be underestimated in Akron, especially when it comes to fighting off air units. Originally, it was a bit of a problem, but static defenses have pretty much been buffed to the point, especially in terms of range that they can deal with Aryans without much issue. They're pretty much meant to do that. Now, Corona Porting, coming up for Jericoon first. Now, Aragon, this is when he needs to attack. He needs to attack right now, because this is the only timing window he has. Jericoon is using a bunch of his resources on Corona Porting, and Aragon has an army already. Jericoon has no army. And Aragon, going for it, possibly 20 seconds too late. We shall see how this turns out. I'm fairly certain that... It's a little bit too late. Jericoon, from his point of view, is getting up a couple Sebi pods. And this is when Aragon actually goes on the offensive. Now, Aragon might be distracted by these reefs. If he gets... Oh, where's the reef that's chronoporting? Neither reef is chronoporting. Chronoporting has been completed. Jericoon can chronoport at this point in the match. Now, Jericoon, of course, has not enough QP to chronoport these Sebi pods until right now. He now does, and he's probably going to do exactly that. Now, Aragon... Why is he not attacking? Why, Aragon, why are you not attacking? You need, you need to attack here. Now, he is trying to intercept the Sepipods. Not a bad idea, but still, the Sepipods can be chrono -ported, and Jericoon very likely to do so. Though, Aragon, I mean, he kind of got lucky. I'm not sure how he spotted that, actually. I'm I'm really quite confused, honestly. I might have just guessed that, but yeah, he's... I'm surprised he's not going for an offensive. In fact, he's completely retreated. Trying to stop these Sepi Pods jumping back, and Jiracoon ultimately is going to be taking some damage on these Sepi Pods, but still, he has Chrono Board. He can build more units. He has tons more resources to build units with, especially if he is building Sepi Pods, because Sepi Pods aren't as QP heavy as Far Pods are. Sepi Pods only cost about 60 QP, 50, 58 QP, while Far Pods 82 QP. And that. Given Jericoon's resource distribution, building more Sepi Pods is not a big deal, and he's keeping them in base and probably going to chronoport them very soon, as soon as he gets the chrono energy to do so, or building another Sepi Pod, but he could very easily do that at any time. Aragon, on the other hand, is going around trying to make sure these Sepi Pods aren't coming in, and they aren't. He just... Well, the timing window is lost. At this point, the timing window is completely lost. There's no way he's going to be able to get in through five Sepi Pods. Two Sepi Pods against two Sepi Pods and two Far Pods. That's winnable, but five heavy pods, no way. At this point, Aragon is really on the back foot. Jericoon, the only disadvantage is the fact that he doesn't have a whole lot of Q plasma left. He is building a lot of units, but once he has those units built, he can very confidently build RPs anywhere on the map he wants, get as much Q plasma as he wants, and then from there, he can chronoport as much as he wants. And he's probably going to do so. Going for a direct attack, while Aragon also going for an attack, both players will meet up in the middle, and Jericoon's forces will win. There's no way that Aragon's forces can win this fight. Zebby pods, some of them are going down, and a local advantage has been established for Aragon, actually, in the center of the map. Jericoon did lose a few Zebby pods, and some of them got distracted going towards the natural expansion. So, there is a slight local advantage for Aragon in this battle, but I think that Jericoon is probably going to correct his mistake. Not sure, though. He might just change the angle at which the Zebby pods come in so that some of them don't miss out on the aerial fight and don't lose a local advantage. Aragon building more Sepi Pods. Both players actually building more Sepi Pods, trying to make sure that none of them has a disadvantage of troops. And it looks like Aragon actually is going to be taking a direct attack to this expansion here. Where the battle was joined is where Jericoon is intentionally attacking rather than accidentally. And Aragon going to try to defend the expansion that doesn't need defense. So Aragon is losing this. He is focusing far too much on defense than on offense, and this is costing him the game. He has not done any damage to Jericoon at all for his economy or anything like that, and he actually had good chances to do so at least twice this game. First when he had these units initially, and then second when Chrono Porting was researched. And he is not taking advantage of this, and he is now losing his entire air force. He has lost air control. Jericoon has the air game. Not to mention the Chrono Porting game. Jericoon has pretty much got this game in the bag. Aragon, his only hope at this point would probably be to build Sepi or Sepis. 
a bunch of seppies and maybe domes. And then try to get rid of the Air Force while possibly squirreling away a few Farbots and Seppipots to the side. Just in case. If he gets rid of the Air Force, then he can counterattack. But at this point, he's now taking damage in the Unplayable Past as well as... There's just so much damage he's taking. As well as in the present, or in the Playable Past rather, nearer to the present. He is... Aragon is just taking a load of damage right now. Getting more Seppipods up, but he does not have any way of getting a local advantage on this, let alone a global advantage. So, J Raccoon expanding once again, very boldly getting more RPs. Actually, moving his RPs, not getting more. New ones are being built towards the northwest side of the map. But yeah, J Raccoon's economy is doing great. Largely because he has the confidence to be able to go out and just build it. Because he can. He's he, There's nothing to worry about. So, J Raccoon losing a Seppipod to some of Aragon's Seppipods. But it doesn't matter at this point. Aragon is taking so much damage in the Unplayable Past. He's taking increasing amounts of damage in the Unplayable Past. And Jerakun double checking his attack. Actually. Oh. Which it looks like Aragon may actually have had a slight local advantage at this point in time. But Jerakun, with the Chronoport, able to get rid of the forces that came in. And it looks like even with that. Before the Chronoport departure occurred, there was an even harder fight to wage. And Aragon could not win that. So Aragon is not doing well at all. All he has going for him is the fact that Seppipods didn't actually go for his main base when they chronoported back. Oh, never mind. There they are now. Chronoport coming in and getting rid of these pretty quickly. Yeah, there's there's really not much chance here. Aragon losing his natural expansion. His main is going to fall shortly after, and he doesn't have a lot of RPs in there either. He does have some forces going to the natural expansion, and nice preemptive defense. I mean, that actually did work out fairly well. He is still going to lose these forces, but the fact that he did move to defend that natural expansion did pay off for him ultimately, at least somewhat. Though J Raccoon has the advantage here. He could, he can't avoid chronoporting here, I don't think. No, he, he the chronoports in the implode pass. These Seppipods are doomed. They will not survive, but more Seppipods are on the way, more resources are on the way. Aragont not going for more chronoporting, and J Raccoon actually it looks like he is attacking with the doomed? Oh, a blue time wave is probably what carries their doom. But he's attacking with presumably the doomed Seppipods. Getting rid of the Spire, which is going to cripple Aragont because Aragont didn't go for any Seppipods Seppi at all, and J Raccoon chronoporting these guys back. Like I said, I'm not sure it's going to actually do much seeing as. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Aragon throws in the towel because Jericho had done another Chronoport back to get rid of the natural expansion using the rest of the Sebi Pods. So that is game. And yeah, that's kind of why you really want to supercharge your economy early on as much as you can get away with. As is true in pretty much all RTS games, get your economy going first and then worry about everything else. So stay tuned. There will be one more game tonight. And that will be beginning shortly.